Thanks for tuning in to the Lean 911 podcast where you'll have a voice directly from the Gemba. I will rely on my three decades of lean successes as well as my failures to answer your most challenging questions regarding your lean transformation. I'm your host, Mark Deluzio, President and CEO of Lean Horizons Consulting and the Principal Architect of the Danaher Business System. Looking forward to your questions now. Let's go to the Gemba. Welcome to episode 47 of the Lean 911 podcast. My name is Mark Deluzio. We're going to talk today about what I'm calling uh, generational Yokotin. Uh, general, uh, let's let's talk about what that is. Yokotin. It's a Japanese word. It essentially, it means sharing best practices. Okay, so when you're you know implementing lean and you have a best practice that you want to share, either between your operating companies or even within your own company within the four walls, uh, that spreading of best practice is called Yokotin. Okay, and uh, we're going to have a couple episodes on Yokotin because there is a process behind how to do good Yokotin when it comes to spreading either a technology advancement, uh, uh, something with cell design or flow or a pokey oak or whatever. There is a business reason why you do Yokotin and, and you think about Yokotin from a strategic business perspective. But I'm not going to go there today. I want to talk more about generational Yokotin. And what do I mean by that? How are we as a lean community sharing best practices and not losing the essence of what our founders taught us? Who are those founders? Well, as you probably know, the Danaher business system was largely based on the teachings of the originators of the Danaher production system. And that was, uh, uh, a group called Shinkajitsu, the original five that worked directly for Tayashi Ono. They were his hand-picked uh, engineers to implement the Toyota production system after World War II. So we learned it right from the horse's mouth, if you will, the guys that actually created it and actually implemented it. So now you say to yourself, well, okay, uh, those practices then why aren't we following them today? Because almost everywhere I look, we are deviating from the, those practices. And, and when I say those practices, I'm talking about the basics, the basics. And, and, and what do I mean by that? Well, look at the Toyota production system house. Ask yourself in your lean transformation, how many of the five things that are on there are you implementing religiously? Just-in-time concepts? Are you following just-in-time philosophy within your business? Judoka. Almost no one is doing judoka today. Okay, the machine detects an abnormality and stops, right? And jo judoka has a lot of other implications, and we'll probably do a separate episode on judoka all by itself. But by the way, it is a respect for people issue as well, where you don't want the operator standing there watching a piece of equipment in case it fails, all right? You wouldn't want to stand in front of your clothes dryer and just watch your clothes spin around and around in a little window, right? So uh, that's a disrespect for your operator. So then on the bottom of the house, you got three things. You've got standardized work. You've got high level scheduling, which is essential for implementing standard work and calculating your tack time. Tack time is one of the three elements of standard work. The other two being work sequence and standard work and process. And then the last is uh, Kaizen. Well, it's not last, but it's the last one I'm mentioning. Kaizen, we are ill-equipped today of committing ourselves to doing Kaizen. So many companies I know who are doing lean put all the right posters up. They have the yellow tape on the floor. They uh, have all the t-shirts that claim the lean uh, business system of the, of the day, but we're not dedicating ourselves to doing real robust Kaizen. As a matter of fact, one company, a defense contractor, uh, their mantra in one of the divisions was, yeah, we're going to do Kaizen after lunch on Wednesday between one and three. Okay, well, good luck with that, right? It's kind of like Arnold Schwarzenegger going to the gym and saying, you know, I'm only going to work out once a week uh, uh, between the hours of 1 and 3. 
but I do want to become world class. I do want to become Mr. Universe. It's just not going to happen. If you're not doing Kaizen, you might as well just pack it up, take a, pull up all the yellow tape, tear down the posters, okay, and get rid of your Gemba boards, which is a whole other story of another day. You're not doing the basics. But let's just talk about we all agree. Let's say we all agree that the basics are that. Fundamentally, the Toyota production system house. One of the problems we got is that, and, and, and when we started, when I started this in 1987 at Danaher's Jake Break, we didn't have many consultants out there screwing us up. I hate to say it. Yeah, we had Arthur Anderson. We started with Arthur Anderson, and, and they were good people and all that, but their, their understanding of lean was so elementary at the time. And that's not a criticism. That's just where the industry was at the time. So we did a lot of just-in-time stuff, but when it came to cell design and flow and built-in quality and all the things that we talk about, standardized work, you know, they were nowhere near that. But we didn't have a lot of pollution from all these other companies, quite frankly, and that was a big benefit for us. But now if you look at what the consulting industry has done, and you're just start coming into this and starting to learn with less over the last 5, 10 years, I don't know how you make heads or tails out about what's really going on out there. Very few consultants, and I'm not trying to advocate or speak ill will for you know lean consultants, but let's just look at the list of the things that uh, that we 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 had to face out here. Lean Sigma. Lean Sigma was concocted by Arnard Sharma at TBM, which is now a defunct uh, uh, lean consulting company. But he confused the heck out of the industry with the Lean Sigma moniker. And of course, Six Sigma being the Sigma part of Lean Sigma. Okay. And by the way, it made a lot of money for him. People, you know, attached onto that silver bullet like you wouldn't believe, like it was some kind of mystery and some kind of magic. And one of the problems today is everybody's looking for that silver bullet, but not willing to spend time on the fundamental basics that I just described as outlined by Tashiono and the Toyota production system. Other conventions that went around. Theory of constraints, TOC. I did a whole episode on why TOC was not included in the Danaher business system. Okay. <laughs> DFM, demand flow uh, manufacturing, or DFT, demand flow technology. Like TOC, another, another invention to sell software. That's really that John Costanza did. Uh, he did a, a real number and took the dista most distasteful parts of TPS. When I say distasteful, I mean the hard parts of it, like level loading. They claimed you didn't have to level load. You can make 50 today and 500 tomorrow with their system. Okay. As long as you buy their million dollar software. All right. They claimed uh, in process combines, IPKs, <laughs> flies right in the face of one piece flow. Right. So, that's another one. Another one that confuses people out there right now is Industry 4.0. Now, I've been at this for the long, for you know, going on four decades. I don't remember Industry 1.0, 2.0, or 3.0. I don't remember those. Maybe I missed those versions. But now we have Industry 4.0. Okay. We have Scrum. We have Agile. We have Kata, which the original Japanese mentors laugh at that. I hate to say it, but they laugh at that, that it's 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 not spelled out by anybody who I've met from Toyota or have, you know, con uh, or consultants from Toyota. The role of AI is really confusing everybody. I even saw a post the other day, does AI replace lean? I mean, you know, I, I, I just don't understand... Where, where people are coming from today, okay? Process behavior charts. A book was written that said, hey, uh, we need to understand our data with process behavior charts. And when you kind of look at that, a process behavior chart is nothing more than a control chart developed back in the 40s by, by Walter Schuhart. But we call it now process behavior charts like it's something new. Well, we got to sell books. You can't continue to sell, you know, a book with the same name that somebody else invented. Okay, so so all of these confusing things that I just mentioned, and there's others, by the way, 
are concoctions for consultants trying to make their name and be the next Deming or Tayashiono or, you know, whatever, Joran. And it's just doing a disservice to the lean industry, an absolute disservice. You know, for those of you out there who uh, are NFL football fans, and for my friends in Europe and around the world, I'm talking about U.S. football. We had a very famous coach way back when, Vince Lombardi. And they actually named the Super Bowl trophy after him, the Lombardi Trophy. When he took this broken down Green Bay Packer team in the 60s, his very first practice was he held up a football and he said, gentlemen, this is a football. And he worked from the basic ground rule of what a football was to how to block, how to pass, how to tackle, do all the fundamental things. I kind of look now, and if he was alive, he'd probably uh, choke at the West Coast, Coast offense or the shotgun, right? And he, uh, maybe not, I mean, but he won how many, I forget now, how many championships? And lauded as perhaps the best, greatest coach in uh, football history. Okay. Gentlemen, this is a football. He went back to the basics. And by the way, I've, I've told... I've had CEOs tell me, Mark, we don't need to go over the basics. We already know that stuff. And there's a big difference between knowing and doing. Uh, my mentor, Shahiro Nakao from Shingetisu, could not understand why Americans would say they knew how to do something, but couldn't demonstrate it, okay? Could not understand why that was. Now, there still today consists a colossal amount of misunderstandings that we shouldn't be fighting today. I know new people come along, they get involved in this later in life and all that. But when you start looking at all of this confusion I just mentioned between all these different concoctions that are out there, primarily all designed to sell consulting services or software, okay? That's really what they are when you get right down to it, or books, okay? I, I can really understand why people get so confused. Now, if you're going to buy a book or talk to some kind of, you know, pay for knowledge or whatever, make sure people are teaching you the basics. If they come up with a new name for something and they come up with some kind of fancy slogan, I will, I'm not saying it's bad stuff. Just be aware that it could be a wolf in sheep's clothing, okay? Just be careful with what you're looking at there because there are no silver bullets, there are no plug-and-play transformations. There are zero silver bullets out there today, okay? There's no magic sauce. It's a lot of hard work. It's fun work, but there's a lot, it's a lot of hard work. Now, what kind of misunderstandings do we have today? I continue to see this on LinkedIn. Now, I'm only going to mention a few, but there's so many out there. Well, first of all, the whole notion of standard work. I don't know how many companies I walked into that claim they're doing lean. And the first thing I would ask is, where's your standard work? Oh, it doesn't apply to us. Well, why not? Oh, we're seasonal. Uh, we're high mix, low volume. Um, we never, we can't level load our, our schedule because customers call us at the last minute and we have to respond. These are the kind of answers you get. So standard work doesn't apply. Remember what Tashiono said? He said, without a standard can be no improvement without a standard. Okay. So all these different ex excuses, by the way, just to let you know, Toyota was high mix, low volume. Okay. When they implemented this and people think they're mass production, high, high volume, and they were not. All right. The whole notion of tack time and even what tack time is, I see it misused so many times. Now let's just say you understand what tack time is, how we calculate it is misconstrued. Okay, I had a whole episode earlier on in this uh, podcast. can't remember what episode number it was, but I, all I did is talk about tack time. The whole episode was on tack time. And if you go back, let me see if I can find it for you. Uh, yeah, it was way back episode six. We're on 47 right now. So 41 episodes ago, I talked about tack time and what tack time really was, how to use it, and what the meaning of it is and how important it is. Remember, it's one of the three elements of standard work. 
I continue here. Oh yeah, we made a lot of uh, uh, efficiency improvements, so we reduced our tack time. Reduce our tack time. That must mean you went and sold more product because if you understand the denominator and the in the numerator, <laughs> that means you sold more product, so you brought your tack time lower, which means it's faster, right? That means you're selling more. Big, big, big misunderstanding. The concept of flow. Everybody wants to go to a Kanban, which is a pull system. Nikau taught us that uh, Kanban is an admission of failure to do one piece flow. Why do Americans, in particular, whack in a bunch of Kanbans? I actually saw a Kanban one time between two machines. Had a machine right next to it, that part came off that machine. It didn't go anywhere. Well, right to, uh, next step in the process was that next machine. They put a Kanban between the machines. So people understand what's going on here, right? The whole concept of a two-bin, speaking of Kanban, two-bin con Kanban system. And where do you use that? People think you need to calibrate your supermarket with a two-bin, and that's totally wrong, okay? That's another misunderstanding. The difference between flow lanes in supermarkets or, you know, Kanbans. And remember, supermarket came from the fact that Tayashi Ono, Got the idea from a U.S. Uh, grocery store called Piggly Wiggly. <laughs> They're still in existence today, down south. He walked in and saw how product was being pulled from the shelves. That that type of uh, uh, grocery establishment did not exist at the time in uh, in Japan, and it gave him the idea of this kanban. Now. That's sometimes why we call it a supermarket. But I even got into arguments with people about, well, a supermarket is this and a combine is that. No, no, they're the same thing. Come on. When do you use a flow lane? Totally misunderstood when you use a flow lane. We'll have to do an episode on that. Okay. SMED teams, dedicated SMED teams. I've gotten a countless arguments over SMED teams, dedicated SMED teams. No, we can't do that. It's going to hurt our productivity. Okay, so changing over for four hours won't hurt your productivity. With a SMET team, you can do it in 10 minutes. Okay, do that math for me. I actually had somebody once, a client once, pull one of the people off of a SMET team, a standard two-man SMET team, because they didn't want to hurt their productivity. And their 15-minute changeover went to three hours. Okay, now... SMED teams, it's, it's a big, big subject, and I've debated this time and time again, but there's a big misunderstanding there. And if you go back to the father of SMED, uh, Sigio Shingo, in his SMED book, he has great production books, and I recommend all of them. He talks about the fact that changeover teams need to be dedicated. And when they're not doing changeovers, they're practicing. Just like a pit crew in a auto race. That's all they do is changeover. Okay. What's the role of a manufacturing engineer? It's quite simple. Make the job of the operator easier. You're not your job is not a catalog engineer to order parts and buy solutions. That's not your job. Nicole used to check our hands all the time. I'm not an engineer, but even though when I was on Kaizen teams, he check our hands several times a day. Ah, uh, Deluzio son, hands not dirty enough. Go back out to, to Gemba. Out of conference room. Get out of conference room. Okay. Go out and do Kaizen. Chairs in a cell. Big controversy. I did a whole episode on that uh, not too long ago. Uh, let's see if I can give you the episode number. Uh, chairs in a cell is, uh, and I called it, I believe, to sit or not to sit. That is the question. Yeah, here it is. Uh, episode 33. And, and all the rationale why we have to have chairs in a cell. All right. Um, again, this whole notion of Six Sigma, you know, we did keep Six Sigma in, in the Danaher business system. And I did write a, uh, a paper called the Six Sigma Hysteria. If you want to, if you want to email me at mark at lean 911, I'll give you that at the end. I'll be happy to send you that paper. It's called the Six Sigma Hysteria. I'm not anti Six Sigma. I'm sure I'm a green belt. I'm a certified green belt. Okay. Um, I understand it. And I also understand when it needs to be used. But to try to solve the world's problems with one tool is is foolish. It's kind of like building a house with only a hammer. 
we actually had to take the word six sigma off of it in the Danaher business system and we call it variance reduction. Otherwise people will get enamored and want to actually pray to this church called Six Sigma, like so many other companies did out there, to their detriment, by the way. Uh, how to run a good Kaizen and what is the Kaizen all about and how to conduct that? And what's the leader's role in a Kaizen? Problem solving versus problem fixing. See, all these things I'm talking about here, and I can go on, there's an immense misunderstanding. And it's like the telephone game that we used to play in school where you had 20 kids in the class and they start out with a story and the first kid whispers to the second kid and second to the third. And when you get to the end, it's a totally different story. It might've been a masked man went into a bank and, and, and robbed, robbed the bank. And when it came out, it might be something like Johnny's mother made, you know, chocolate chip cookies for the neighborhood. I mean, you know, I mean, it gets, it's that crazy, but I think we have a lot of problems with the message with Yokotin of the originator, the originators of the Toyota production system. Let's let's not fool ourselves. You want to get into a pedantic debate about the difference between lean and TPS? There is none. There is none. Okay. The Toyota production system fundamentals are sound. They work. Okay. And anybody that comes along and tells you what well, doesn't apply to them, you need to check them at the door because uh, that's just wrong. The principles apply. So, when you look at all of the misunderstandings and who you're listening to, and you also got to ask yourself, uh, well, what's that person's experience with a true transformation? They may write some nice books. They may have a few buzzwords. They may stimulate your thoughts, which is fine. But have they actually done it? Have they actually hands-on implemented what we're talking about? Successfully, by the way, okay? That's the real key. So we've we've lost the message, and it's getting more and more confusing out there today. And in one sense, one of the worst things you could do is take advice on LinkedIn unless you really understand who you're talking to. And there are quite a few people out there that are really good at what they do. I'm not going to name them today, but uh, maybe one episode I will name them, all right? I just, I'm afraid to leave somebody out, that's all. So anyway... We need to do a better job at Yokotin, and my recommendation to you would be this. Go back to the fundamental basics. That's it. There are no silver bullets. Anybody coming up with a new buzzword or a new package of uh, something new that may be something old that they're trying to reconfigure, it's just confusing, and you're never going to get anywhere when you're fighting this battle. Okay. I'm going to stop. That was generational Yokotin. I'd appreciate your con uh, comments. I'd be happy to, uh, actually a couple of papers. Uh, I'd be happy to offer to you uh, uh, one. I, I wrote a white paper on comparing and contrasting the, the Danaher business system with the Toyota production system. How are they alike and how are they different? Uh, I'd be happy to send that to you. Uh, I'll be happy to send you my white paper on the Six Sigma Hysteria. I believe I do talk about the Six Sigma Hysteria in my book, Flatlined. Flatlined, um, uh, Why Lean Transformations Fail and What to Do About It was written over four years ago, still tracking really well in the lean category on Amazon not too long ago. It was number two still, okay? And that ebbs and flows as sales go up and down. But uh, I'd be happy to send those. As a matter of fact, all my white papers are on my website, leanhorizons.com. LeanHorizons, all one word, dot com. You can download all of my white papers on my website, and those two are on there. But if you want me to email and send them to you, send me your email. Uh, let me know who you work for, uh, and I'll be happy to zip one back to you, and we'll go from there. Okay? Anyway, episode uh, 47, gener Generational Yokotin. Uh, any questions, comments, email me at mark at lean 911.com and that's m-a-r-k at lean l-e-a-n 911.com and by the way 911 is the emergency number here in the u.s i know in australia i think it's triple zero not sure what it is in europe but uh anyway that's the website uh mark uh email mark at lean 911.com and all these episodes can also be found on, on on apple Podcasts and all that and on the website lean 911.com We'll see you next time. Thank you.
Thanks for listening to the Lean 911 podcast. I'll be happy to address your questions or feedback on future episodes. Email me at mark at lean911.com. You can check out our other episodes by visiting our website at lean911.com, our YouTube channel, wherever you listen to podcasts. This is your host, Mark Deluzio. Thanks for listening.